All right, Pickle. Week 8 of the Texas high school football season starts in like five hours. Mm-hmm. We got games everywhere you look. And and it's big games, right? You know, you're talking about week 8. This is the final third of the regular season. Yeah, that's wild. Like, there are some teams that after tonight, they will only have two games left of the year. Mm-hmm. There are some teams. That's kind of crazy. That is wild. But, a lot to get to. Probably none of the teams on this list. <laughs> 672, I think, 74, around there. Texas high school football games across the state. We chose 10. These are our opinion, the 10 biggest games of the Texas high school football week eight. Let's go to the graphic, and we'll start in the middle, 7 o'clock tomorrow night in Austin. It's a huge week in Austin. Mm -hmm. It's a massive week in Austin. 7 o'clock Friday night, it is the unbeaten state ranked Round Rock Dragons taking on the number 17 ranked Austin Vandergrift Vipers in a critical showdown here uh, in the Austin area. So Vandegrift has that one loss to start the year. We'll talk about that team in a moment. Uh, they have that one loss to start the year, but since then, they've really gotten the wheels back on, especially offensively. Braden Buchanan, their quarterback, has been great, and per use, their defense has been great. You go back a couple of weeks ago when they beat Maynard, and that was an unbeaten Maynard team, I believe, at the time, and they shut them down. Absolutely. Defensively, they have been fantastic. Since giving up 23 points to Dripping Springs in the opener, they've given up 19 in their next five games. Defense has been great, but this is going to be a big test for them going up against this Round Rock squad that is really feeling it. This is a team that can beat you in a variety of different ways. Their defense has also been spectacular, and they are able to run the ball. Uh, they've got a, a dual-threat quarterback in Mason Cochran, who's been very good. I think that their running back, uh, Ruben Ribeiro, uh, I, I'm of the belief that the more they feed him, the more good things happen. And, and really, their defense has been leading the way. This is a huge matchup there in District 25-6A. I think it's for the district title. And so the winner of this game is going to be in the driver's seat for the district title, which may have some major implications because, depending on how another game goes this week, Cedar Park, Vista Ridge, and Round Rock, Stony Point, these could both be D1 teams. So the winner of this game would at least avoid Westlake in the first round of the playoffs. So a lot on the line here, Vandergrift and Round Rock tonight or tomorrow night in Austin. 7.30 p.m. Friday night in Dripping Springs. It is another top 20 matchup in 6A as the number two ranked Austin Westlake Chaparrales take on the number 16 ranked unbeaten Dripping Springs Tigers. We thought Dripping Springs would be good uh, moving up from 5A, but maybe not mm -hmm. this good. And they, they, but, but, okay. So Dripping Springs is an interesting case. They have the signature win. Okay, yes. they have the signature win where they go, they go to Vandergrift and win 23-20 in the opener. Fantastic. I could make an argument that they've been coasting on that since mm -hmm. then because they haven't really played anyone since then. That win over Bowie is good, but I also think they're just better than Bowie. I think Bowie's the fourth best team in that district. Um, you know, depending on what you think of, of Buda Johnson, your mileage may vary there. Have they beaten? Has Bowie beaten Johnson? No, they played them this week. It's another big game. But Dripping Springs has has you know they don't have to apologize for who they've played because they've been dominant. They've been fantastic. And Pickle, my question to you. When is the last time that Westlake did not have the best quarterback in the game? Yeah, that's been a uh, a hot minute. Like, I mean, Battle of the Lakes, you can, you know, every maybe. every year it's kind of like, okay, maybe a little bit of a toss-up, but maybe, not yeah, in maybe, recent years. Yeah, exactly. I mean, those, that's a, just two quarterback factories going out in between that uh, game. Yeah, but at that point, it's at least very close. Yes, exactly. Dripping, it's willing to be debated. This is not willing to be debated. And I like what Westlake's done at the quarterback spot, but mm -hmm. there's but Nelson Novosad has been a stud. He's oh, yeah. been fantastic, but furthermore, their defense has been great. They gave up 20 in the opener to Vandegrift, and in their last five games, they've also given up 20 combined. Their defense has been on point. Going up against Westlake, riding the state's longest winning streak at 46 games in a row. Um, they have been outstanding. They are, again, this is a much less star-studded Westlake team. I like what they've got. Jaden Greathouse is obviously great. Jack Kaiser, their running back, is great. But, like, they are, to me, a team that wins in the in the the, the places you overlook. Mm -hmm. Defensive line, Colton Vosak. Offensive line, TJ Shanahan. That's where they win. They win in the nitty gritty. Well, and this is fun because we were we were with quite a few of our media brethren last night and like just I think the consensus around this game is there hasn't been a game that Westlake has played in other than the Battle of the Lakes that has been like really hyped yep. up in, in a long yep. time. But especially I mean 
this this one, it seems like everyone's more excited for this game than they have been for the Battle of the Lakes the past couple it's of years. I mean, game. since Klubnik was there. And for Dripping Springs, they've got an opportunity to really earn their stripes as a 6-8 program. I think they're underdogs in this game, but maybe smaller underdogs than you think. Huge game in Dripping Springs tomorrow night. 7 o'clock Friday night in Burleson. Live on TexanLive.com! This is huge. Get it's there. number five Alito visiting number six Burleson Centennial and the Alito Bearcats put their 108 district game district winning streak on the line in this one. Centennial is coming off of snapping Denton Ryan's 52 game district winning streak last week and we know exactly what they're about. They're about running game out of that pistol out of that that option offense with Elijah Say and they are about defense. Mm-hmm. Defense, defense, defense has been fantastic. They have got an opportunity to grab to to grab, you know, the biggest scalp, uh, you know, out there. I mean, this is the team that this is the longest district winning streak in Texas high school football history and they've got an opportunity to go and snap it at home. Alito has rallied since starting Oh and two, and I think the offense has really found its groove. House Haney, their quarterback, has has gr- grown up, and I think Hawk Patrick Daniels, their running back, has stepped up in a way. But this is also more of a. Uh, I would also say this is not as star studded. This is an Alito team that wins in all the Alito ways, like offensive line and defensive line. Defense, I thought, has been very good this year. This is a game that's determined by pace, right? Can Centennial can. Can Centennial control the pace against Ryan? If they do that in this one, they're going to snap a winning streak. But uh, Alito's also really good against one-dimensional teams. This game's going to be fantastic in Burleson on Texan Live. Be there. 7.30 p.m. Friday night in Columbus. The number two ranked Columbus Cardinals get a matchup with another unbeaten against the Hitchcock Bulldogs. We're going to be joined by Craig Smith, the head coach of Hitchcock, here in a moment. Uh, if you like if you like young quarterbacks, you're going to love this game. Hitchcock's got Lloyd Jones the third. Uh, Columbus has got Adam Schobel. Um, this game is fascinating for a number of reasons. We're going to get in with Craig Smith, uh, Coach Craig Smith here in a moment. But this game is really, really good down there in Columbus, 7.30 p.m. on Friday night. Yeah, I'm pumped about this one. I think, too, when you look at Region 3, this one has has a chance to show who else is in that contention because we talk a lot about Lorena. We talk a lot about Franklin. This is going to separate the who could contend with those two programs. 100%. I think you're spot on. 7.30 p.m. Friday night in Lancaster. It is another game of, of great import in District 7, 5A, Division 1, as the Forney Jackrabbits uh, visit the Lancaster Tigers. Boy, what a one-two punch for Link, for, for Forney. Mm. Last week, they're at Longview. This week, they're at Lancaster. According to the computer, Light scheduling. Huh? According to the computer, they go from the number one team in the state in five A Division One to the number two team in the state in five A Division One. Uh, Forney is a team that last week kind of you know they, they kind of got beat down. Uh, their the defense kind of fell apart a little bit on them, but but Longview will do that to you. Uh, can that offense get going once again? Going up against Lancaster, who's who's got two losses on the year. One of them uh, was to Denton Geyer, and the other one was to Longview. Those are two pretty darn good squads. Uh, this is a game that I think if Forney uh, it, if, if a lot of this is about Lancaster's defense. Lancaster's defense has been really good with the exception of that loss to Geyer. If they are able to play that kind of defense, then I think they've got an opportunity to really take control at least of second place in that district because they already got that loss to Longview. So huge game there, 7.30 p.m. in Lancaster. 7.30 p.m. tomorrow night in Bellmead. As I said on Texas on Step, Tep and Step, the spiritual home of Dave Campbell's Texas football <laughs> is Bellmead. Yes. As the Waco La Vega Pirates welcome in the number two ranked China Spring Cougars in a really interesting district opener uh, for these two teams. So uh, when realignment came out, you remember we all kind of marveled at District 5, 4A, Division 1. Because you had China Spring and, and Stephenville, China Spring and Stephenville. Well, don't forget about La Vega. Now they've got a tough record at at uh, at four and three, but those three losses are to a full strength Waco Connolly by one, to Midlothian Heritage on the road, and then to uh, Lorena at Lorena by one score. So this is a team that is battle tested. Uh, they are much better, in my opinion, than their record indicates. They have gotten going. Ru- running back Bryson Roland. I think the defense has rounded into form. This team is dangerous going up against China Spring. Now China Spring's got that loss in the year to Dallas Parish Episcopal. That's the number one private school team in the state. I always compare that to like a good 5A team. Mm-hmm. Um, and so for for China Spring, I don't think there's any shame in that. Uh, the offense. We had big questions coming into the year. 
about uh, the offense, especially replacing Major Bowden. They have answered those with Cash McCollum. Offense has been great. I don't know that the defense is as good as it was last year, but that's also kind of an unfair bar. Uh, this is a game that if La Vega can get that running game churning and shorten the game a little bit, I think they got an opportunity to steal one here. The other question is, there's two other things in this. One, La Vega's had China Springs number. La Vega's won three straight against China mm-hmm. Spring. And, like, so stylistically, they just match up pretty well. They give them trouble. And two, this is, uh, so next week, China Spring takes on Stephenville. Is there a look-ahead factor? Is there a look-ahead factor? Keep an eye on that one. Big game there uh, between China Spring and La, and La Vega. 7.30 p.m. Friday night in Corpus Christi, the number three ranked uh, Corpus Christi Cal Allen Wildcats. Welcome in, Alice fascinating game in this one. You've probably heard a lot about Cal Allen this year. New coach Steve Campbell is undefeated with the Wildcats. They have been great. Even after losing running back Epi Hinojosa, they've really stepped up in a big way. One thing I think is interesting about Cal Allen this year, believe it or not, they're throwing the ball a bit. They have a thousand yard passer. Bryce Burnett has thrown the ball for 1,000 yards. Steve Campbell said that he was going to make sure that they understood that it wasn't a sin to throw the football. <laughs> they opened it up, the offense, a little bit. They're, look, they're still running the ball with Blaine, uh, Blaine Lamb, and then, if they, of course, they asked their quarterback, Burnett, to, to, to throw the ball or run the ball, but, but they're throwing the ball a little bit. Uh, I will tell you a team that definitely knows how to throw the ball, mm. and that's Alice. Alice, of course, has Cutter Stewart, uh, uh, the probably the best quarterback you are not talking about in the state right now. He has been outstanding to start the year. 1,400 yards, 17 touchdowns through six games. He has been spectacular. They need a big game from him. Can they find a way through that defense? That has been very good for Cal Allen. A big game in the Coastal Bend tomorrow night in Corpus. 7 o'clock Friday night in Stratford. Go up to the Panhandle where the number six team in the state, the uh, the Stratford Elks, welcome in the Panhandle Panthers in a really interesting dis- district matchup that I think has major implications down the road. Uh, district 1, 2A, Division 1. I think that the uh, I think that the, uh, the the district title is on the line here. I don't think that's really going on a limb with all due respect to to. Also unbeaten in District Sanford Fritch, but that was their one loss of the year. These are the two best teams in the district by a pretty considerable margin, in my in my opinion. Uh, this Panhandle team does have the one loss on the year, but it was uh, you know at Wellington. That's uh, a pretty good Wellington team. This is to me going to be about whether or not this uh, this uh, this. Stratford team can find a way through what's been a very good Wellington or Panhandle defense. This is a Stratford team that, of course, uh, is uh, the defending state champs. Uh, they have been rolling ever since, I think, very quietly uh, putting things together. Uh, but they've they've found some answers. You know, they've got they've got a junior, a sophomore quarterback in Bryce Braden who stepped up and they're running the ball really well. They've got a three headed monster running the ball in Zane Bird, the aforementioned Braden, uh, and then Mar- Mauricio Duran. This is a fascinating matchup here. Can Stratford kind of get that? That offense humming in a way that uh, get pushes this panhandle defense, which has been so good all year. Fascinating matchup there in Stratford in these two A ranks. From 2A to 6A, 7 o'clock Friday night in Duncanville. It is the number three team in 6A, the Duncanville Panthers, welcoming in also unbeaten. Do you know about this? <laughs> you hear about this, Kev? Mansfield is undefeated. Yeah, and they what are. a story Mansfield has been to start the year. Uh, 6 and 0. Off to a fantastic start. You know, this is a team that we did not have super high hopes for, uh, and yet they have uh, proven to be a, a real threat and a real uh, a, a program that I think is, is really on the rise. A big reason why, in my opinion, is their defense has been pretty darn good. Their defense has been pretty consistent. They gave up 34 to Lake Ridge, but that's basically the only time they've been touched up. Um, I, I think what you what Coach Greg George has really has been doing has been very, very uh, strong, especially because they've got a couple of playmakers that they really like. Like James Johnson running the ball. Sergio Kennedy is doing enough throwing the ball as well. And the defense makes it stand up. This is a different animal, though. You're, t- you'll de- you're dealing with Duncanville. Duncanville has looked every bit the part of, of a true state championship contender. Uh, are they able to, for Mansfield, the question is always going to be, for basically any team uh, that that uh, that plays against Duncanville, is how do you match up up front? That's the whole long and short of it. Also going on the road, this is a litmus test for Mansfield. This is where do they stand in that district. I don't even need them to win this game no. I mean they've already got a win over Cedar Hill but they've got the three like to me they're going to be in the they're going to be in the playoffs uh, unless they 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 choke it away in my opinion against Skyline mm-hmm. uh, but this is a real litmus test of where they stand and a huge game uh, depending on where they go next because next week they take on Waxahachie and that could be straight up for third place in that district mm-hmm. and 
Uh, let's see. Depending on... Yeah, no, no, it looks like Walks Hatch, you'll go D1. So, you know, it depends on a few different things. But uh, a huge game as far as uh, seeding is concerned there uh, tomorrow night in Duncanville. I've really enjoyed this. Di- we've always enjoyed this district, but mainly it was because, oh, you look at Duncanville, DeSoto, Cedar Hill, and you think, oh, yeah, that's a great district. But I've enjoyed this district this year because it's the second tier teams I guess you could yeah. kindly consider them that have really been fun to watch like it's not ju- and Cedar Hill obviously dropped way off but it's not just Duncanville DeSoto so, Duncanville DeSoto it's like oh there's other good contested that's, games that's the thing it's like with with the kind of the demise of Cedar Hill mm-hmm. it's opened up a spot and there been there's kind of been like everyone kind of crammed through the door right and, and I think that Mayfield because with actual good teams it wasn't like right. fluke teams yeah. like one person kind of said oh well Cedar Hill's gone we're gonna step up it's right. like everyone's been good exactly and finally, 7 o'clock tonight in Alvin, live on TexanLive.com. Let's go. It's the Richmond Foster Falcons, the number 10 team in the state in 5A Division One, traveling to take on district rival Manville in a matchup that always seems to deliver. Uh, these two teams always tend to put on a show. And it's become a bit of a, a bit of a fun rivalry between these two. At least for me, I don't know if it's fun for those guys. It's fun <laughs> for me. Um, you know, uh, now now Foster has won. Uh, you know, the, the, each of these, each of the last two, they won in 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 uh, 2021 and 2020. Uh, and Manville would like a piece. Now Manville lost the opener and then they lost a close one to Angleton. So this is a critical matchup for them as far as district uh, placement is concerned. If they're able to 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 welcome in Foster and beat them, that would be huge for them and and essentially I would say lock up a playoff spot because right now there's five teams, maybe six if you count Friendswood, that are vying for four playoff spots. Mm-hmm. So this is huge for Manville. For Foster, it does feel like they've shaken off uh, that loss to Magnolia West. They got right against Fort Bend Kempner, but but really what is this Foster team? Like, I think the Manville defense has improved considerably over the course of the year. I think they're playing their best football right now. They're also coming off an open date. Does that make a difference for them uh, taking on a foster team that, you know, in their one loss, the offense just kind of got, got stymied by a, really, by a good Man- Magnolia West defense? Fascinating matchup there. Uh, huge implications in District 10, 5A Division One. A Manville win would really throw things into chaos in that district. Yes, it would. <laughs> so a lot to sort out here. So if you like chaos, you know yeah. who you're rooting for. <laughs> this, is a, this, is a, this is a chaos game mm-hmm. in 10 5 Division One tonight on Texan Live, Richmond Foster and Manville. Which there they are. Very tasty for a Thursday. <laughs> there they are, the top 10 Texas high school football games of the week. Of course, we've got tons of games you can watch all week on, on TexanLive.com. 